Hey guys, welcome back to Cool Borders 2001. I'm Insetic, and with me again is Blank Tester. Hey kids, how's it going? So, we've learned how to do sweet there, special I'm tricks, blaming. and sweet hey, bonks, Hi, and Kevin. just sweet tricks in general. Hi, so, now it's time to take some of that and Come go on, do the me. career tricking events. We will do Get all four of them in this video. I know, it's a pretty short video. Well, these are some pretty short events if you know what you're doing. So we're gonna pick replay. Uh, the uh, difference between free ride and freestyle boards are like, even though it looks like they have the same stats, free ride is better for racing, even though it's called free ride. Mm -hmm. And then freestyle is better for tricking. I know, it's... It's whatever. Uh, it's just like everything else in this game. It's like... Just one who, step away from being One step really away good. from being real sensible. Like, yeah. I, I feel like I should give my verdict of the game, you know, now, and that is that it's ambitiously awkward. You know, you can see the footprint there for some really cool things, especially now busting out these special tricks. But, like, the special tricks nice. are a perfect example of it, where you have these cool tricks, but they're all basically random shoulder button press combinations. Yeah. Just like a fighting game. You know, it's yeah. it's not like SSX like SSX tricky. It's not like uh, very similar button presses where, like in tricky, your Uber tricks are L1 square or L2 square or R1 square. You know, right. one square is button. constant and one yeah. shoulder button plus a tweak, and then your character's signature move is two shoulder buttons plus a tweak. Here, you might have to hit L1 R1 L1 before a jump. For Before the trick. jump, yeah. It's not like Before during the jump. the jump. You're doing X and then L1, R1, L1, R1. Yeah. Before or you like even get to the jump, yeah. L2, R1, L1, L2. You know, it, it, it's just like... Thankfully, it gives it all in the manual, and thankfully, I do have this game physically as well as on emulator so that I had that manual. Otherwise, I would be kind of SOL with with what the special tricks you have are. And you actually have some of them from the very beginning. You I know just, that the, oh, this kind of the, this kind of touches on a thing that I was talking about in an Insday Wednesday, one of one of your live streams a couple weeks ago or how whenever this comes out, I'm not really sure. Um, where I can't learn combinate button combinations like at all. I'm just not I'm too old now and I'm too stupid to like learn <laughs> video games that well and so like i would struggle a lot with this game because i'm not learning it as a system i'm just learning it as a bunch of button combinations i have to right. know x and then r1 l1 r1 or l2 l2 l1 to do a trick yeah. and it's like it's totally arbitrary there's no pattern to it it was memorization and i basically memorized that I would do a certain combination off a certain jump. I basically... Yeah, see, that one's R2, 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 L2. Uh, yeah. It's just random. No other special tricks follow three button presses of the same button and then a fourth of another one. Yeah. So it's it's just like back in Splashdown 1 when those tricks were basically random. But... Excuse me. First, there was that half pipe and... You just go back and forth, do sick tricks, and get fucking ripped, and you make it through. And then, a big air event, uh, pick one of your special tricks, go off the big air. Maybe you could throw in an extra grab if you're worried about your points. But then, here we go. So here's the second half pipe, the high line half pipe, and you saw some pretty interesting things in that kind of overview. Mm -hmm. You kind of got some branching paths in the pipe as well, and... Also, it's kind of cool if you notice off to the sides of the pipe, it looks like there's another course huh. off to the sides. Uh, yeah, off of that first half pipe, there was actually the uh, course we went to in video three. And here, off to the side, is a course that we will visit later on in this game. Interesting. So it's kind of like they saved memory by kind of having... Just loading locations. everything on the same maps. Yeah. But also, it makes it feel like more of a world. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. uh, that's nice. I don't know if that yeah. actually does save memory. Maybe it doesn't. But I would think it would. It, it is a cool effect. It is a cool, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Part of a certainly saving world. space on like the little room you spend on like skyboxes. 
Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, yeah, you've just got some, some cool jumps, but also it's just really coolly laid out, mm -hmm. uh, this sort of area. I mean, sure, you might jump and smack your head on something above you, or especially here where uh, th this... It, the idea is that you would ramp up and over the rail and be able to jump up to different sides, but because the game is a bit clunky, it's kind of hard to get your momentum right. But, uh... You definitely need to have special tricks down by this point, or I guess bust a, a ton of regular tricks. Uh, because the uh, score limit got quite higher. It got to, you know, 20,000 points or so, I believe. But you just make it through. Cannonball! And you make it, yeah, earn 20,000 points. I, I will say that... The ending screens feel a bit sudden. You know, maybe I'm used yeah. to maybe I'm used to an SSX style of you won and a timer or your score and slowing you down and giving you a few seconds while it kind of loads, you know, everything and to have it just suddenly pop up is a bit like, oh, did I win? Did I lose? You kind of have to read it for a second to know what happened. It, I know it's a bit odd of a of a thing to point out, but I, I do feel like, you know, like other games do have that extra touch of kind of pacing out what happens after an event a bit more to where it's not so immediate. But all right, we're on the second Big Air event and you saw that the game showed you some sequences you could do. You will need to do one of those sequences and probably do some awesome tricks during it to get uh, the points requirement. And uh, so, huh. yeah. I like all the sponsors. You know, it's kind of kind of dates it in a little way, like uh, Right Guard Extreme Deodorant, you know? It reminds me of, like, Downhill Domination being sponsored by eBay. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, eBay has a sponsor. It, it, they've got so many. They're so blatant about the amount of sponsors they have. Like, they slap the logos on, like, all available space on the sides of of, uh, of the levels. But, yeah. So, you do that whole sequence and a sick trick and some more tricks, and boom, there you go. You've passed 28,000. Heck, you might pass, like, 40,000. You might al almost get 47,000. That right there is a lucky number. But yeah, yeah, here's another special trick. L2, R1, L L1, L2. I think I do that once in the entire series, that tuck knee, just yeah. because that's really hard to remember. But there you go. That was the four tricking events. We just knocked them out one after the other. And so after this, we're going to go to our first cool border cross event, the CBX event. We're going to go to Fisher CBX. So I'll see you there. <laughs>